Hello, hello, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. It's Friday, December 17th, and here we are getting ready to share headlines and stories from our city, from our state, from our country. Take a look at what's on your mind, what you guys are up to, <clears throat> where you guys are watching from, and combine it all together into this joyful recipe. What am I talking about, joyful recipe? All we want to know is what's going on out there and spend some time with one another, which is a wonderful experience for me. And I hope it's a wonderful experience for you as well. As always, we have all kinds of interesting news. We have a lot of show and tell today. and We have a, another neighborhood to explore. Um, so I think it's going to be a fun day. But before we start with our broadcast, as always, if you are new to the broadcast, please give us the opportunity to say welcome and we can do that if you are um, kind enough to write the word new in your comment. And that way we'll give you a nice happy welcome. Also, I want to acknowledge our YouTube viewers, uh, which we don't get to uh, interact with live. But, um, but we appreciate that you are watching. Hello, YouTubers. Please hit the like button when you are watching. And of course, if there is something particularly important that you wish to bring up, during the broadcast, it helps a great deal if you add the word, the letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and that way we will make our best possible effort not to miss it during the broadcast. And of course, all these wonderful hellos and all these wonderful comments and questions that you have, we will address in the second half after the weather. But first, let us take a look at the news and we'll take it from there. Oy. Well, the challenge of increasing hunger and homelessness and destitution is real in Puerto Vallarta, as is the case of many large cities, and it is visibly increasing as you walk through the city. I could attest to this yesterday when I was out and about, and unfortunately, it is something that is now part of our growing city. The local DIF or Integral Family Development Office now has registered over 200 and in fact close to 250 such individuals through the city and the institution is now hoping to collaborate with other official entities to find a solution to address the situation. This is no easy task and it is no happy task. The situation is complex because complex, complex. It's complicated. That's what I'm trying to say. More coffee, por Paco. It, the situation is complex because um, many of these destitute individuals refuse to find other ways to live as many are helped by city residents. And so they have no major incentive to improve their lives. So, of course, I read this article by the director of DIF where he says, well, we could build a center, but what good is a center if they're not going to use it? Again, it is a complicated situation. All I am trying to convey is that, well, first of all, I want to share the news with you and share the fact 
that the city is mindful of this and hopefully they will find a way to address it in the most um, human, kind way possible. That's what I'm trying to say. Meet um, Hortensia Dueña Salcedo. She is a new person in charge of the Reglamentos Department here in Puerto Vallarta. She has taken over the office after Jose Luis Pelayo was fired in the middle of a controversy that continues to rumble in inner circles to this day. What are her credentials? Well, she has extensive experience in public office with over eight years of work as a lawyer in the Reglamentos Department. She is not affiliated with um, any particular political party. And as she has stated when she took office, she is here to get the work done in the most honest way possible. We certainly wish her well. Uh, moving right along, the joint promotion of Puerto Vallarta and Riviera Nayarit, the tourism promotion that is, is about to get more complicated with the increase of hospitality tax in our neighboring state as it presents a situation of unfair competition. These are the words of Puerto Vallarta hotelier Gabriel Igartua Sanchez, who also stated that this will ultimately not uh, present a problem for Puerto Vallarta, but it does make it more challenging to move forward with marketing and promotional plans put forth by both the local and the Riviera Nayarit tourism bureaus. It's Christmas shopping season, of course, and not only is the Pitilla Christmas market in full swing, but local authorities also granted at least 120 additional permits for local businesses in the surrounding areas of the main plaza to set up shop on the sidewalks and on the street during the holiday season to make their merchandise and products more visible to people walking by. This probably means that driving through downtown uh, Pitillal these days is most likely unthinkable, but also probably makes for a fun afternoon of shopping and people watching. Um, we sauntered around Pitillal not too long ago. We haven't been back, but maybe this is the perfect opportunity to just go and check out this lively, very Mexican neighborhood here in the city. Now let's talk about vehicle verification. Um, according to this news report, vehicle verification, which is supposed to now be mandatory in the Guadalajara metropolitan area, has not been very successful with only 40% of vehicles abiding by the program to date. One of the reasons that has been presented behind the failure is the lack of enough personnel handling the verification process and the ensuing long lines and waiting time. Apparently, fines and sanctions to those that do not verify their vehicle will begin in July of 2022. But again, we are talking about vehicle verification in Guadalajara. But the program is about to launch here in Puerto Vallarta as well, as construction of the local verification center is scheduled to conclude in January. How will the program go here in town? Well, we don't know. But according to this news note, verifying your vehicle in Puerto Vallarta will have a cost of 500 pesos. And again, it will be a mandatory affair. When and how will sanctions be implemented in town? Well, we will find out as we move forward. But first, let us take a look at our weather and see what kind of weekend we can expect. What kind of weekend we can expect? That was difficult to say and it just came out so nicely. Kids, come quick. The sun is out and shining on the important part of the world. We are not enjoying 27 degrees. We're enjoying 25 degrees. It's two degrees cooler than what we usually report at this time of day. Uh, feels like 27. Humidity is higher than in the past few days, 66%. And for those of you that enjoy Fahrenheit uh, information, which is apparently only the United States. I was reading in the in the, in the online the other day that the only people that still, still get along with Fahrenheit degrees is the United States. Well, for those of you who are dear to our hearts, um, the temperature is 27 degrees and our weather forecast for today says mostly cloudy through the day with a high temperature of 29, low temperature of 20. Tomorrow, 
Saturday, we can expect a mostly cloudy day with a high temperature of 28, low temperature 19. And Sunday will be a clear day, how nice, with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 17. So it is chilly. It is difficult to get out of bed this time of year. I don't know if you've had a, a, a challenging time getting out of bed. God knows. I enjoy being all cuddled with Luna, and that's ah, one of the perks of this time of year. Now, I want to tell you that on a day like today, but in 1790, yes, that is 231 years ago, the Aztec sunstone was discovered in Mexico City by city workers doing repairs to the city's cathedral. The Aztec stone, the Aztec sunstone, also known as the Aztec calendar, is a late post-classic Mexica sculpture housed in the National Anthropology Museum in Mexico City, and it is perhaps the most famous work of Mexican sculpture. The massive monolith measures 358 centimeters, that is three meters and a half, or roughly about 141 inches in diameter. It is 98 centimeters, or almost a meter thick, and it weighs a whopping 24,590 kilos, or roughly 54,210 pounds. And it is absolutely stunning and a must for anyone visiting Mexico City. Of course, Mexico City's uh, Anthropology Museum is an absolute must for anyone walking around, I mean, visiting, visiting the city. And, you know, once you get to the museum, it takes forever to go through the whole thing. Um, and uh, so it's easy to say, oh, I'm tired. I'm not going to see the whole thing. But you don't want to miss this particular monolith. It is absolutely stunning. And now I have a little bit of show and tell things that I've seen yesterday. And, um, and, uh, Oh, what a nice comment. I'll get to that in a second. But what a nice comment I am reading right now from Daniel Deben or Deben. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, I was doing my errands out and about, and I found some interesting things. And I also found some uh, interesting things online this morning that I wish to share with you. So here we go. For starters, check out uh, this... Um, awesome mural. It is on display at La Colonia Burgers in Versailles. And while I have not been there yet, I have heard a lot of praise for this awesome burger place. Why are we sharing this? Well, if anything, I think it is amazing and wonderful when a business or venture finds fun and creative ways to engage their viewers at a time in which we're all trying to get our message across we're trying to get people to come see our shows, come shop at our stores. You know, sometimes it's the simplest things that make a difference. What has La Colonia done? Well, they show this photograph and their caption says, how many um, characters do you recognize in our mural? And just from looking at this, I am, I am curious. I see Homer Simpson, I see Betty Boop, I see Frida, and I see uh, all kinds of fun, popular characters interspersed with this beautiful uh, Puerto Vallarta landscape. I don't know who created the mural, but I think kudos are due for the nice friends at La Colonia. Uh, La Colonia Burgers, that is. In a similar fashion, I keep hearing more and more about this cleverly named talent competition. It is called So You Think You Can Rice. And Rice is, of course, the name of a well-known local orphanage. And what a fun way to engage the local community. Apparently, there will be some preliminary events taking place at the, at the Palm. These will be semifinals. And then there's going to be a grand finale at Teatro Vallarta. But I could be wrong on that. Um, in the meantime, I think it is, it is, again, worth mentioning that you know, it's nice to see people being creative in the way they promote their their chingaderas. Yes. Um, I also want to let you know that if you're a beer drinker, you are probably familiar with Los Cuentos, which is a, a, a popular artisan beer brand available here in Puerto Vallarta. Yesterday, as I was strolling from one errand to another uh, in the vicinity of Versalles, I discovered that they have their own tap room. Uh, who knew? 
where you can check out some of their beers along with a basic but fun menu. Um, and I took a photograph of the menu so that you could see, you know, you can get like a very affordable shrimp broth and a fried bean gordita or a pork rind gordita. They have guacamole, ceviche, um, Mexican tortilla soup, as opposed to Canadian tortilla soup. What am I thinking this morning? Aztec style soup, they call it. Um, bone marrow tacos. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are fun here. Again, it's not a very, um, it's not a very comprehensive menu, but it sure looked like a fun place to stop and, and grab a beer and check out some of this fun food. So there you have it. I will leave more information about this venue in the show notes as always. And Kathleen, thank you so much for chiming in. I sent you a private message this morning to find out if you made it to the preliminaries for uh, So You Think You Can Rise. And I am looking forward to more details about what you're going to do when you're going to appear so we can go in and cheer for you. Please let us know. I have three more items before we dive into our neighborhood conversation. These are more of the taking care of ourselves fashion. I personally enjoy reading this kind of stuff and hope that you do too. If you don't, please let me know because these are things that don't necessarily have anything to do with Puerto Vallarta, but I think they have everything to do on uh, <clears throat> with healing ourselves and healing our soul. The first one is an article from Huffington Post that says, I can't self-care my way into feeling better anymore. Self-help won't fix COVID. Here's what to do when all the pandemic mental health advice seems frivolous. Have you been there? And how many times in the last few months? I can honestly say that I'm there quite frequently. So this is one of those articles that provides practical um, knowledge and information so we can take care of ourselves during these challenging times, which are exacerbated, but which are amplified during the holiday season. Um, again, this may not be your cup of tea, but I think it is, uh, it is important. Uh, another one of those five damaging food comments we say too often around the holidays, these toxic phrases, can make people feel unnecessary, unnecessary shame and suck the joy out of the season. Again, I'm guilty as charged <clears throat> for some of these, and I think they're important to keep in mind. Another article that I hope you will take a look at and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully all benefit from these. Paula asks, did you know your speech to text is on or is it just me? As far as I know, Paula, uh, the speech to text function is always on in Facebook. I don't control it. One time I turned it off and somebody cringed. So we keep it on. Um, and um, that's just the way it is. If you guys don't want to see the speech to text on your screens, I believe you can turn it off on your end. But I must confess, I don't exactly know how. Uh, before we dive into our Colonia adventure, I just want to share a humble reminder that tonight we're having what I'm sure is going to be a fun, festive, love fest interview with Amy Armstrong and Fernando Gonzalez, who are working very, very hard at making their one night only concert at Teatro Vallarta a huge success. I am so proud to be part of this performance, and I am shamelessly doing everything in my power to make sure that the venue and the whole thing is as successful as we can contribute it to be. So please don't hold it against me if we continue to bring up this concert because I think it is going to be a, a lot of fun. And now before we dive into your comments, and I've seen, I try not to glance at your comments because I get easily distracted, but I love it when I'm already looking forward to all kinds of fun and interesting comments. But first, let us all very quickly, um, oh, thank you, Michal. We can all turn it off with the CC button, closed caption. Well, that is a no-brainer. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Colonia of the Day. Where is my keynote presentation? Here it is. Okay, so today we are going to discuss 
las gaviotas. And las gaviotas, according to Google Maps, has this very strange uh, perimeter. I mean, I know that las gaviotas, let me put it on the screen so that I can point at it. Hold on just a second. I know this to be las gaviotas, but this other appendage that Google claims is part of the neighborhood, um, not only is it not even representative of las gaviotas, but it is located elsewhere. So we're not going to even think about this. This is where pecado is, and there's a there's a soccer um, there's a soccer field, small soccer field, and this to me has always seemed more like los mangos and uh, this area over here looks more like, like Fluvial. So we're not going to take that into account. We're going to focus on Las Gaviotas, which is over here. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you about Las Gaviotas, even in fact, before we dive into the presentation itself, is Las Gaviotas stands aside from just about every other colonia or fraccionamiento or neighborhood in the city because it started as a residential neighborhood and they have been absolutely strict in not allowing any kind of non-residential um, construction taking place in the colonia. Not even buildings, you know, only private homes. And that is the main characteristic of this beautiful colonia. Um, back to our presentation, let me put this back on. You have probably seen one of the main entrances as you're driving down uh, Francisco Villa, you're heading towards Costco. And then there's this little detour of a street going this way. Costco would be further up there. There is Pecado across the street. But once you go into this little cobblestone street, you first are welcomed by the, the, the welcome sign, which looks a little rough around the edges, but it is there. Bienvenido. Welcome to Fraccionamiento Gaviotas. That is the neighborhood. And uh, these cobblestone streets are the norm in the neighborhood. Right at the entrance, there is a paramedic slash ambulance slash fire department station. So it is at least comforting to know that, um, you know, if uh, you decide your pranky next door neighbor kids come and enjoy your swimming pool and they find that you left the access to the fireworks unlocked and they burn your house to the ground, well, at least the fire people are going to show up fairly quickly to make things right. Um, but a boom. Yeah, why not? And then as you continue entering the colonia, things get wider and wider and all of a sudden you are surrounded by beautiful trees and broad avenues with m more and more trees and it, and for those of us that live close to Las Gaviotas and I mean for me it's five minutes to walk to this particular spot it is a great neighborhood to explore if you are walking if you're enjoying yourself the sidewalks are not great and everything is cobblestoned but it is a beautiful, tranquil, peaceful, uh, peaceful location. Um, many of the streets are windy. You don't find like, you know, streets that are set up in perpendicular fashion. And um, and it's it again, it is absolutely quiet and peaceful. It is comforting to know that there is public transportation going on. Through, through Las Gaviotas along its main avenue. And what kind of houses or homes can you find here? Well, you find a lot of very traditional, older style homes um, with huge trees and uh, not a lot of, um, of, of security, uh, but that is changing very quickly for better or worse. Security in Puerto Vallarta is always an issue. So you do find other homes that are better sheltered uh, for those people looking for opportunities to hold on to things that are not theirs. Uh, this is another example of that, a more modern home with practically unclimbable, unclimbable facades. Um, and some of the houses are just gorgeous, old style colonial homes uh, that you can find here. There is also new construction going on. This is quite near my home and it is still being worked on. And there are still a few empty lots and brand new construction going on here. So would you 
do anything in this colonia? Uh, no. Other than, I mean, that, that there's what is there to do? That you can walk around it. It is a pleasure to walk. You can find a home here, but please be advised that the homes are fairly large. So, uh, so it is. It is what it is. It's one of the few really, really beautiful residential colonias in uh, in town. And as Lynn has mentioned, it is very nice that they have building height restrictions. I think the the tallest private home that I've seen in this neighborhood is uh, three stories. You know, and it's it's a beautiful home that well, one of many, and there are many, many beautiful trees as well. Next week, we get to talk about El Centro. How did I not think that this is probably the worst time of the year to go sauntering around El Centro when it is crowded with vacationers and people and Christmas? I don't know, but we're going to do it. We're going to brace ourselves and we're going to be courageous and we're going to go explore El Centro so that we can talk about its history, its evolution, and how it is a complicated neighborhood nowadays and uh, how it's changed, at least through the 20 years that I've been here in town. And now let us take a quick look at your comments and um, and we'll take it from there. It's a lot. It's a lot of good mornings on this beautiful Friday. Let's have at least three seconds of Friday, of Friday music. Happy frigging Friday, says Dave Schwartz. Well, happy frigging Friday to you. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Kathleen is officially living in Puerto Vallarta over five years now. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. If you were not living here, we would have never met. And how would our lives be if we had never met? Or your husband. Mm, sexy. I didn't say that. I did say that. Well, everybody knows that I think Todd is sexy. But that's that's me. I'm done. Uh, let's see. Kathy here. Hey, Kathy. Hello, Dan. I hope you guys are continue to recover from your COVID. Paco, why do all of the Mexican people that Dan has told he will be retiring soon seem sad for him? Oh, my God. What a great question. Why would anyone feel sad that you announce your retirement I honestly don't know, Kathy, because um, I've never thought about this culturally. I my first reaction is is Dan is retiring or anyone is retiring is how joyful that you've accomplished whatever you have accomplished in your life and you're able to retire. But um, I I honestly you you left me speechless. How do you guys react to people retiring? Have you heard of this instance of other people from Mexico reacting with sadness? That seems, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, Kathy. I'm just saying that I have never encountered this. And I'd be curious to see if anybody else has comments about this. What a great question and what a fascinating situation. Um, Karen says that she had you had the same reaction when I, you told people a couple of years ago. Were these Mexican people or was this elsewhere? How funny. I never thought about this before. Thank you very much for making me curious about something new. I love it. Cheryl, who is in Ajijic, I believe, is looking forward to our interview with Amy and Fer tonight. You know, Cheryl, one of the things that I want to talk to Amy about, and although I know she and I will not have any solution, is that I read that Ajijic has a brand new kick-ass cultural center with a nice little theater and stuff. And I can't help but to wonder why is it that a Hijic can get a decent venue and Puerto Vallarta cannot. With all due respect to the show venues that we have, but you know, one thing is a show venue and another thing is a theater, a multi-purpose theater that can uh, respectfully be used to present music, theater, dance, and all kinds of many disciplines. Um, so we're going to talk about that tonight, I hope, and we'll we'll take it from there. Let's see. Kathleen says, so did I. Friends from Tabasco told me that some people didn't understand pensions and thought of it as being forced to stop working and losing your income. Curious. Curious. Americans and their fear of metric system is incomprehensible. 
I'm keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> oh, and there's that nice comment from Daniel. Daniel, I am so glad that you have found... Uh, uh, I'm so glad that you have found uh, the source of the yerba mate that you were looking for. Uh, in terms of work restrictions, well, um, you know that every country has their own guidelines for people to be able to work in other countries. So um, all I can suggest is if you're looking for work opportunities in Mexico, just become well informed with, um, with the guidelines of, of, of Mexico. Uh, a lot of people uh, seem to come here to Puerto Vallarta, and I'm sure other parts of Mexico thinking, well, it's a vacation destination, there's all kinds of opportunities, etc., etc. Well, there's all kinds of opportunities. I just hope that your expectations are well grounded in the knowledge that is made available by our government in terms of what you can or cannot do while you're here in terms of employment. Good luck with that, and hopefully once you get here, you will find what you're looking for. Uh, <clears throat> Marie comments, a poor homeless man died on the street last week in front of onlookers outside the kiosco in San Salvador in Colombia. He had been living in that spot for quite some time and refused any help from concerned parties so, other than some food so tragic. Yes, I read about that, Marie, and it is, again, it is so complicated, the whole issue of homelessness. Um, uh, more comments about Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Kathleen has been to La Colonia Burgers. Thank you for that. Uh, Raymond has been there. I tell you, maybe, maybe this weekend, maybe this weekend we'll we'll go there. Uh, let's see what else we find. Uh, 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 ooh, more comments about grams versus ounces. I'm staying out of all those comments. Um, and Kathleen told us that she made it to the preliminary, so I hope I hope you will let us know what's going on and when you are going to be. Uh, displaying your your talents um, uh, please let us know Kathleen I don't know if I'm going to run into the information later on in the comments but whenever it is that you are going to be performing I will be happy to be there to cheer you on um, boom, ba -da -ba -ba. Rita fills us in with the final benefit show for Rise is at Teatro Vallarta and there is a link with more information thank you very much Rita do 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 mm. Lynn says, I like having the speech to text so when I am in public spaces, I can lower volume and not miss the commentary. That's a good idea. I watch my Netflix movies with subtitles on, and if the movie is in English, I watch it with English subtitles because sometimes the accents are a little complicated for my ears, or there is that feature that some actors have in which they have to whisper everything, and then you cannot hear a fucking thing. <laughs> Let's see. Um... Fernando is so darn guapo. This would be Fernando of Amy and Fernando. He is handsome. He's not my type, which is an advantage because that means I can poke fun with him, not at him. And he doesn't do a single thing for me. But I think he's very, very talented. And he's sexy. You know, he just, well, never mind. This is not about me. But I'm glad, Julie, that you find him guapo. Fantastic. Um... Kathleen got her tickets to Amy, Fernando, Brandon, and James. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you very much for supporting that. Um, Kanda says, my wedding reception was at the Las Gaviotas Clubhouse. Pretty fancy back then in 1987. Well, you know, I was having lunch with Michael Buford and his husband. They live in Las Gaviotas. And I asked Michael, Michael, you pay maintenance fees for that clubhouse, but I never see it in use. How are you comfortable with that? Um, is there a procedure in which you can rent it or use it? Or why is it not open to the public? He said he'd get back to me. But it is, you know, if you're driving by or you're walking by, it's a huge space. And I'm sure that the Colonia could make more income from renting it or something. We don't know. Let's see what else. Da, da, dee, da, da. There's another question. Did you receive the updated information you, I sent regarding Rodolfo, the blind tenor's performance this Sunday? I did not, Marie. And what I'm looking for is not information. I'm looking for links uh, to news items. I'm looking for links to a Facebook event. Um, 
I think based on the information that we received yesterday, we are not going to support as much as we'd like to any kind of event or news item that is not backed by some foundation. And by foundation, I mean, we need to read it on a news item, on a newspaper. We need to see it on a Facebook event. We need to see that whoever's organizing something is at least interested enough to provide the information in a comprehensive way, in a credible format for us to be able to endorse it. And I think I, that's what I get from you, that that's what you're looking for. So if you have provided that, Marie, I will take a look at my inbox or wherever you sent it. And if it fits the criteria of what we're using it, we'll gladly mention it tomorrow. If not, all we can say is best wishes for the organizers. Let's see what else we have. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Michal does the same thing as I do. What we do in Las Gaviotas is walk through it, enjoy the beauty on our way to Siam Cuisine. It's We're due for that. Let's do that again sometime soon. Um, and yes, Kathleen approves of my having a crush on her husband. Thank you very much for being so supportive. You know, it's, it's a distant crush. We're never going to do anything to top the churner other than love him as a friend. You guys are such wonderful friends. Um, <clears throat> Paco, does the Mexican government have any news of the Omicron new variant? Of course they do. There's just no news that, that affect us directly. It is spreading. It is around. Uh, we know that it is very contagious, but we also know it is not any more uh, deadly than the other variants. I don't know that there's much more information that would be useful to share here at this time. What I can tell you that is useful to share here all the time is that Omicron is very unlikely going to... The possibility of Omicron affecting you, Angelica, or anybody else is very low if we follow the same guidelines we've had around us. Um, and not guidelines, mandates. If we follow the mandates we, uh, we know that are in place. That is the important news as far as I'm concerned. And those news we're going to continue to repeat as long as it's necessary. If you don't wear your mask, I'm not saying you specifically, but if we don't wear our masks, if we don't safe distance, look at the hand, even the hand got involved. If we don't wear a mask, if we're not safe distancing, if we're not washing our hands frequently, if we're not keeping these basic sanitary mandates, well, of course, it's likely that we'll catch Omicron or any of the other variants at one point or another, regardless of our vaccination status. Remember, vaccinations are not a 100% foolproof shield. And that may or may not be what you're looking for, but that is what I can tell you based on what I've been reading. Um, Julie says, Las Gaviotas was a glamorous neighborhood back in the 90s. I can believe that because it's still glamorous. I mean, you look at some of those casotas. They're big homes and they're very, very glamorous. Um, more comments about retirement. Uh, interesting. I don't know that I'll ever retire, so I don't know that people will be sad for me. So, ha, <laughs> uh, Oh, and Raymond, we have been missing your punts. So you think you can rise? I should say that to my breath, though. Boom, boom. Can you please share again about the car registration process? Thank you. Well, Monica, how did it work for you when you go to see a play and then you get up in the middle of the play and um, because you have to go pee and then you come back to your seat and you tell the players of the play, excuse me, can you play that scene again? I don't think that went very well for you, did it? My dear friend, please wait until the show notes where you will find all the information that you need or kindly watch the beginning of the broadcast later on when it will be available for you to watch as long as you want. If you can think of a great reason why we should stop the show for me to repeat something and uh, keep everybody waiting for new stuff, I'm all ears and I would be happy to learn about it. Um, Lynn says, I'm curious about the colonial fees for pool. If you're talking about the one in Las Gaviotas Clubhouse, I have not seen water in that pool 
in in forever. So so there you have it. I don't even think they're using it. And that is such, such a shame, such a shame. Kathleen found it. Uh, she's sharing the link to the preliminary on January 30th at Encanto. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. It is Larlene who is performing. My gosh. For those of you that don't know, Larlene is Kathleen's alter ego. And you can meet Larlene by going to her own website. I don't have the link, but she is she's quite some lady. She's a lady to be reckoned with. Uh... Marie says, info on Rodolfo's performance was posted by the organizer on Facebook and I sent to coffee and headlines. I'll look for it. I hope you sent an event, a Facebook event. We are not looking for something that was posted at Puerto Vallarta, everything you did or want to know or didn't get to know. What we're looking for is a Facebook event, please. Um, Heather, getting incomplete information about upcoming events has always been an issue in Vallarta, but getting a bit better. However, not every well-intended organizer has the know-how or ability to provide it, so many may need a little help from their friends. You know, Heather, um, I'm going to, you just push the ramp button, and God knows you and I have sailed this conversation for years that we worked together at, Port, at Vallarta Lifestyles. Um, if there are well-intended organizers that don't know how to do it in this day in, and age. It's about time that these well-intended organizers reached out and looked for that help. But not three days before the event. You know, I am sure that whoever is organizing any event that is not well publicized, let the word out months ahead of time weeks ahead of time and said, hey, I have this great idea, but I have no idea how to promote it. I need specific ways to get this on Facebook, on the papers, on the magazines, on people's mouths, ears, nose, and throats. Who can help me with this? The situation would be different. So, and that's not news. That's not, and I, and I don't mean to, to, to throw this back at you, Heather. I just find it difficult to believe that in this day and age, even the best intentions are hijacked by the organizer's own inability to ask for help when they need it and where they need it the most. So I agree with you, but, um, but I disagree with you. I mean, I, I went to a play yesterday and I, I enjoyed myself. I had a good time. I, as a promoter, I kept thinking of ways in which the organizers of the play could have used even some key phrases from each one of the vignettes they presented to tease the audience, to get the audience more curious about what the play was about. But I left the theater thinking, who was this for and what are they doing to reach that audience? And I thought it was a shame that there were not more people in the audience. But, you know, some people need to be able to do at least the very minimum to take care of themselves if they expect other people to take care of them. And I am so sorry. I didn't mean to get ranty about this. But um, I look forward to reading your comments about this because, frankly, I, I don't get it. I really don't, especially when other agencies are doing such a great job at doing their job. But I see that our conversation is winding down to 79 people. I'm going to let you go because I have a lot of things to do and you probably have a lot of things to do. Tonight's interview is indeed at 7 o'clock in the evening and I look forward to seeing you there. It'll be a lot of fun. And if it's not your thing, uh, oh my God, Dan, that is a slap in the face. And yes, if you use Google, you can Google Facebook how to make an events page and the instructions are available. Don't get me started. I mean, seriously, I don't get it. What play did you attend? I played, I attend something that um, Beyond Therapy Players, they are doing a show upstairs at Nacho Daddy uh, and they're only playing two more days. And, and again, it, was, it is unfortunate for all the effort they must have put forth in getting people to, to enjoy the show that there were not that many people there. Hopefully, they'll have better attendance in the last two final shows. This
This is all I have for you today. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. And if not, maybe I'll see you tonight. And if not, maybe I'll see you Monday. Have a good one.